could be interesting to see. Zelda is definitely one of those characters you don't see very often, but it has a little bit... There's more spice to that character, I think, than people give credit for. A lot of folks are used to fighting the Wi-Fi Zeldas, you know, just kind of slapping out those B-moves and then up being out of shield, like any opportunity, but 17's a little, a little more... a little more sophisticated than that. So, there's a little bit more... Uh, a little more to it. But here we go, Shaman! First and 17 for winner semifinal. Shaman was just on commentary with us for the last match, and now she'll be in here brawling. Catching that down. Oh wow, 17 RD. Putting the pressure up a lot there. Both these characters kind of floaty now that I'm looking at it. I mean, Ness obviously <laughs> famous for being floaty. Floaty combo character. But yeah, Zelda's got some uh, got some float to her as well. PK fire on ledge. Oh wait, the reflect actually caught Shaman's jump in. That little bit of extra obstacle. That's a that's a, an edge case you're not used to seeing. Usually the reflector just sends it right back or doesn't work at all. But in this case, kind of added an additional wall there for 17. 17 still having a little bit of trouble getting back. The Phantom hovering the ledge get up though is going to give them an opportunity. Actually, just going for the up B out of shield. I think that was out of shield. Just for the stock right away, and that's a, I mean, hey, that's a solid kill set up there. It's something Shaman will have to be thinking about. Anything that's spaced a little bit wrong could be vulnerable to that, depending on... Wait, what was that pivot grab range, excuse me? Through, like, the whole nest dash attack at max range? That's ridiculous. Reflector is giving Shaman so many problems, too, and not letting Shaman sitting up on that platform to send those PK fires down like that. Damon's got 17 off stage now, though. The teleport just kind of going right past. Looks like there's a lot of options here that Shaman wants to go for that Zelda's tools kind of just cover. That timing, just working that out and getting past every one of those different, you know, threats there Shaman had to deal with and still not getting nailed by Phantom, that's impressive. You gotta really be on top of your uh, movement there to figure that out. And then just to punish out of shield with the back air to even the stocks up. Damon's certainly not out of this yet. Or just demolished the knight with the baseball bat there and got a solid chunk of percent in the process, too. That's mean. Oh, that? Okay, the jump is still there. I thought that double jump was gone for a minute. That would have been stressful. Damon's starting to figure out this neutral pretty well. I mean, this 17's having trouble finding a hit. It's been quite a bit now. But Shaman's movement, oh wow, caught on the PK fire though. That teleport just, uh, it can punish you for hitting buttons from quite a distance. 17 leaning into that a little bit. Sled situation sometimes, it's so terrifying. You've got like the, the knight set up, you got Zelda ready to hit you, you got like so many other options. Clearing the ledge with the teleport to not get yo-yoed as well, man, this really does. There's a lot of, like, classic, like, you know, nest tools you used to see in every game that just don't seem to work well here. Damon, though, for what it's worth, I mean, playing right through it and still keeping the game even, even in spite of all these tools just kind of having some, some unusual answers here from 17 side. 17 trying to find a way back, throwing out that Nehru's wisdom just to make some time. Shaman ready for the teleport this time. Gets the parry, gets the up smash. Gonna lose the stock right back to that Guardian with a huge sword sweep. Oh, this is not where you want to be on this last stock, though, given that, that first up air combo there to Shaman. I mean, that's so much damage right off of the bat, and then the situation off stage here is just not gonna be easy to deal with. Catching the neutral get up from a distance as well using the PK Thunder. Wasn't able to follow up off of it, but you know, even just getting a little bit of extra percentage. That's something, and it means that 17 can't, you know, has to think about ledge options at all times. It doesn't matter where you're at. When you, gotta, when you can cover it like that. He also got getting through there. Teleport, though, puts Shaman in a really bad spot here. Stuck off stage, just out of the way of the soldier as well. The spacing Shaman is displaying in the air here is really impressive. It's really keeping them in this game here and keeping 17 uh, just running for their life right now. Any one of these back airs we're seeing, I mean, Shaman's definitely trying to find it. Any one of these back airs could absolutely take it. 17's just trying to find a way to stay at a distance. And 
figure out a way to stack up some more damage here, but the way that Shaman's kind of playing this neutral out, it just doesn't seem to be uh, leaving a whole lot of openings for 17 to capitalize on one last neutral B from 17. Gives Shaman all the openings she needs to catch that back throw. Gonna take game one. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of... We saw like a lot of tools, a lot of like the traditional Nest gameplay kind of get shut down by some of the tools 17 had, but Shaman just kept adapting, kept looking for different ways to deal with those things. And you know, it, it did at the end of the day, it came down to a lot of like just with punish with uh, grab and with dash attack and just throw out back airs to threaten at close range. But if a simple game plan works, then the simple game plan it is, you know, if, if, that's, what's, uh, if that's what's getting through your opponent's defenses there. That's what's getting through the wall. That's what you gotta go for. Bateman thinking about it here, maybe considering pulling the snake out instead of the nest. But it looks like we are gonna have the nest after all. Three, two, one, go! Alrighty, let's see here. Game two. Already, Shaman uh, finding a, quite a bit of these nest combos, starting to rack the damage up. I think that game plan that we saw develop in game one is just uh, continuing to play out here. Neutral get up again from 17, gonna get caught by the yo yo, but the teleport is gonna clear that ledge. 17 has a chance to uh, get back into the driver's seat here. And on a map like this, with those uh, three platforms, it could be tough for Shaman to get out of those uh, bad situations now. There's a lot of potential, a lot of juggle potential going on here. A dash tag, though, is just providing such a problem for 17. There's so much stuff that is otherwise safe on most of what Ness can do, but the dash tag is just enough to get through. Not the Phantom once again, but not going to land. Shaman throw the PK Thunder as well. Waited on the ledge there. <laughs> didn't try to, like, ledge trap. Didn't try to uh, move up. Just kind of hung out. 17, able to get back to stage off of that. Now these phantoms, oh, it was looking like Shaman's game for most of that stock, but only took one or two slip ups and that phantom just does so much. Shaman comes right back down though, snaps the stock right back. And uh, we're back to an even game here. It's the brawling does not, and that part is uh, not working out super well. Hold on, wait, 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 maybe I was spoke too soon. I was gonna say not working out for 17 here, but just like that, starting to uh, find these hits with the boxing tools as well. You know, this has gotta be like an adaptation back, you know, like, Shaman definitely had a pretty uh, cut and dry system that was dealing with 17's more ranged options. So Shaman's trying to move in and brawl a little bit more, which is, a scary proposition against a character like Ness, but so far, hey, look at that. It's looking, for, it's working for him. Even just finding the uh, uppies out of shield, if, if you can even just force him to throw an aerial out at the wrong time, force him to land on your shield the wrong way, you gotta, you got yourself stuck. It's just blowing out with back air. Make them figure it out. 17 does, in fact, do that, though. Gets right in and goes right back to it every time. Shaman hits the shield. There's an up B out of it just to uh, find the punish and the PK Thunder as well. That tool has got to be getting frustrating. There's a lot just that, uh, yes, you know, kind of punishes more linear movements and angles with the way they can float and wall things off when you can just teleport through it. It's, uh, it's a problem. Oh, was ready for that one though. Absolutely ready already with the uh, PK, or the, the yo yo rather. Trying to find something to get that kill on 17 here, but the back throw absolutely gonna do it. Back to a fairly even spot. Let's go either direction at this point. What a catch with that teleport, setting Shaman out as well at the last place she wants to be. She's trying to get back. That was still a huge chunk of damage that you know you do not want to be giving up right now if you're Shaman. 17 trying to cover this ledge. However they can, not gonna be able to stop Shaman from getting back up here, but 17 is definitely playing out that range a little more now. Oh, nice recognition of the spacing there from 17, seeing that Shaman had stopped the PK Thunder just a little bit too close and a little bit too low. Arc of that sword is gonna absolutely 
Catch that PK Thunder. Going to 1-1 one, one for the set. And this, I believe, will be best of five. But we'll, uh, we still got a ways to go here for this set, potentially. Thinking about the stage choices here, this would be Shaman's pick. So Smashville makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Has uh, a little more options, a little more potential to get back. Oh, and looks like we're getting a switch to the Bayonetta as well. Okay, this should shake things up a little bit, I think. This was looking uh, very difficult as the Ness once 17 started to figure out how to uh, get around that game plan. But, uh, you know, Bayonetta definitely has better options on the approach here to try to open 17's up, uh, defenses up, and that might just be what Shaman needs. Waiting out the Nehru's Wisdom too. Shaman feels, looks pretty familiar with this matchup. At least knows what to look for as far as, uh, not overextending the combos. Look at that. Waiting for it, grabbing the second burner kick, and then going to town with the Bayo combos. That preemptive neutral B cost 17. Oh man, somewhere in like the 70 to 80% range now. That's all it takes against a character like this. Shaman got those combos locked in. And stay at a distance, covering with the guns too. Doesn't even have to interact with the Guardian at the moment. You can kind of just keep the distance. I mean, now you've got a pretty sizable lead. So if you want to camp, you can just camp. There's multiple hits on that down air at point blank like that. 17 parries one, but is hit by the follow-up, and that's going to cost them the stock there. It's character choice definitely uh, working out for Shaman here. Oh, big spike with the bat within going to help Shaman get out of that. That could have been a lot of damage, potentially, she was looking at. 17 still trying to find these openings, but the burst movement from Bayonetta is proving difficult for 17 to deal with. Any, like, wrong move, like throwing out the, uh, the Nehru's Wisdom there and not connecting can be punished by that side beat, that burn, the afterburner kick in. At least 17 in a rough spot. There it was again. We saw that side beat, the uh, neutral beat come out, the Nehru's Wisdom didn't connect, and that meant that Shaman could just immediately follow up with the afterburner kick and start off another combo. This is going to be one of those situations where 17 is going to have to make sure every button connects. Because the whiff punish game here is definitely making life difficult. You can see that Shaman is pretty uh, pretty solidly committed to this. I'm not going to approach if I don't have to line here. And it makes sense. I mean, there's really no reason to, to go in. I mean, the stocks are, you know, you're a stock up. Both got 100%, so you're both at kill percent. The 17 ideally going to want to wall out and try to stop you from doing stuff there. Oh, 17 catches that grab, though. That's the downside. I mean, you can only camp. You get, if you give up too much space in this matchup, even if you're camping, I mean, 17 can kind of just put you in a corner and really punish you for being in that corner. The bat within going to go right through the forward tilt. I really thought that was about to set Shaman up for the kill. 17 able to... Maneuver out of it. Gets the grab for the up throw instead. The stocks are evened up. Shaman is still uh, quite a bit ahead percent-wise. Any uh, stray back air here could spell the end of 17 stock. Well, look at that. I lied. That one uh, did not, in fact, spell the stock. Harry, just like that, threw it out there. Knew exactly what's coming. Shaman, it feels like Shaman's just ready for anything 17's trying to pull right now. This feels one step ahead here. And look, just hanging on the platform too, like just waiting. 17, you know, waiting back, because at this point, you just want to let them, you know, you, you really don't want to overextend. If you overextend out there trying to prevent them to camp from camping, and you let them back onto the stage where they can run to the other side, set back up camp on the other side of the stage, and wait for the platform to come back again, you're just you're just getting yourself camp longer. Sometimes you just gotta wait, hang out there, and then uh, you know, just just Find a better opportunity, because eventually that platform comes back, and if they're still on that platform when it comes back, you can start sharking them, but you just don't want to let them pass that ledge uh, for free. Oh, and the misgrab is going to give that opportunity. 17 able to find that stock. 
There's three minutes left here. I don't think I see this one go into timer unless Shaman really, really commits to it. And may not need to. I mean, 17's on their last stop. At something close to kill percent. That said, though, man, 43% off of uh, one neutral interaction there. 17 is uh, definitely even this thing up rapidly. This Bale combo might just do it, though. Are we going off? Not quite good DI. 17 going to survive for now. Trying to clear that ledge off. Shaman ready with the parry for it this time and the immediate punish. Not ready for the second go around, though, that Phantom is set up. Shaman's in a rough spot here. Is able to get out of the way. Still living. Not going to be able to cover that ledge, though, but... Oh, that might be it. Fourth throw? Nope. Still alive. A little too early, though, on the Nehru's Wisdom. Tried to find the Reflect instead of an Air Dodge through or something to that effect, and that gave Shaman the opportunity to just wait it out, fire afterwards, and take that stock. But that should be, uh, that's going to be game three. Game three going over to Shaman. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's winter semis, so it's uh, it should be best of three or best of five. Oh, that's all right. No worries. No worries. Yeah. Yep. I think we do top six best of five here. Maybe top. I don't think we do top eight best of five. Maybe we do. I'll have to ask. I'll ask after this one. I know most of the venues around here do like top six best of five, but maybe we do best eight, best of eight here. I can't, I honestly can't remember. Anyways, not important for the moment. What is important is we got game four here of Shaman versus 17. And 17 is kind of hanging out on the uh, platforms there for a moment. Battlefield, interesting choice for the matchup. Uh, I don't. I cannot pretend to understand this matchup well enough to know the exact reasons for the stage choices, but I, I think I can see it. So far, it seems to be working out pretty well. I mean, 17's getting uh, quite a few opportunities to get in. It does give you a space to hide beneath those platforms and, and be safe, mostly from the air. That might be what 17's looking for here, not giving Shaman as many options to uh, get in. Oh, just the tip of that, catching the jump, though. Shaman's getting so much damage off of that. Tried to go out there and even finish it off with a Nair. Not going to happen, but 17, ooh, probably sweating. Ready with the Witch Time. We saw they get parried for a punish to set up another combo last game. This time, the Witch Time to set it up instead and just find a stock off of it. Yeah, 17's going to not be able to play those games as much with the Teleporter. Definitely is going to need to try to use that a little bit further down to try to click the ledge instead because... Shaman has proven she's got options to deal with that. Just barely able to get back. Shaman's got the ledge. Still has to worry about these soldiers here. Not moving in. Oh, the burner kick this time. A little optimistic. 17 with perfect spacing. Able to forward tilt it from the platform here. And oh, no. Oh, that's going to be that. Right? Oh, no. Slipped out. Shaman's at, uh, Shaman... You know, slip, uh, the combo slipped up there just a little bit. 17 able to get out and actually survive, get back to stage here. Damon trying to hold on to the stock for as long as possible as well, you can see. I mean, just trying to... At this point, you know, you're probably not holding on to it for very long as far as, like, I don't think you play for timer here, but... I'm sure Shaman is at least thinking, get that damage racked up. Try to get as much extra credit as possible. Just like that, that's exactly not what happens. But Shaman coming right back strong on this stock too. 17, got the reflector. Back to the real edge. Set back up. And then he's up tilt. Oh no. The bat within actually got out of that. 17's looking for some kind of option though. Once that disadvantage starts, 17's got some interesting uh, combo routes and setups. There's the grab. No follow up, but still staying a step ahead here. Percentage-wise, it's looking a little bit rough, but like as far as the data and the gameplay goes, 17 looks like they may have found what they needed. Actually didn't get caught by the full combo there, but Shaman just caught the down air instead to find another stock. 17 in a rough spot now. This you know, that's part of it. This stage really doesn't let Shaman camp out with a lead as much as Smashville did. That might be part of the reasoning for the stage there, but it is instead really enabling some uh, combos and approaches on Shaman's side that is making the camping maybe not seem as necessary. 17 just finds any route out of there, teleporting right to the ground. Nehru's Wisdom is going to land this time. We've got the 
knight set up on the ledge, but it's crazy. Shaman can just kind of drop down and just wait it out off stage and not have to worry about it. Teleporting back down to the stage again as well. That's You know, I like it though. It gets you out of that pressure. As long as Shaman's going to be still looking for that combo follow-up, it gets you right out of that pressure and gets you back to uh, a neutral position. Or even, you know, one where you can try to look to punish a landing or something like that. So, makes sense. Oh, that one almost killing 17. Almost found it with that teleport back onto the stage there. Trying to find something that Shield Poke going to give just a little bit more percentage over. But 17 needs to find something big here to find this kill. That didn't quite do it. That bat within. There have been so many huge hits from 17 that just nearly connected. The bat within stopped it. 17 got the stock, but immediately a shaman drops back down onto the platform with the back air. Gonna lose the set there. 3-1.